This episode of Pop Goes the Culture is brought to you by Kimberly Nichols. Thanks for being a Pop Goes the Culture Patreon contributor. To get your name at the top of a Pop Goes the Culture episode, become a Patreon subscriber for just $4.99 a month. It's easy. By doing so, you'll help us keep Pop Goes the Culture coming to you every day. And as a thank you, we'll put your name at the top of a Pop Goes the Culture episode in the future. Thanks to all my Patreon contributors. Hi, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the inside scoop on TV stories you might not know from the people who were there. Today, in part three of my conversation with Star Trek The Next Generation's Marina Sirtis, she lets us know what Gene Roddenberry was like. Then, Marina gets the full-on Star Trek fan experience, and the moment when Marina realized all the people who were there were there to see her. Okay, here, here's the first geek question. What was it like with Roddenberry? What was he like? You know, because Majel played my mom on the show, um, I suppose I was closer to them than, than maybe some of the other cast. And they adopted me uh, because I was fresh off the boat. And so come holiday time, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, Oscar night, which is a holiday in LA, of course, as you know. Um, they would always invite me to their house. And then when I met my husband, he got invited too. Um, Jean, <sighs> I, w I remember being very nervous when I first met him. Um, the real first time I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him was when I went to talk to him about my character and what I thought you know, she was about. Um, and I was really nervous. But then I saw that he was actually, he had this great sense of humor. And yeah, he was a genius. But he was also just a regular guy too who used to sneak off to the country club to have a drink when his wife wasn't watching, you know, and, and telling him off. Um, so we, um, we had a lot of laughs together. Um, I mean, we, I think very fondly of him because he was so generous with his time. Um, I don't know if many people realize this, but he, he was never unlisted in the, in the phone book. He was, his, his, yeah, Gene Roddenberry was listed in the phone book. And he, and he wanted to be. I mean, you know, it's easy to get unlisted. Um, and our fans would show up, and he would, you know, invite them in and talk to them and give of his time. And I don't think people realize how he really appreciated how the fans had supported the show and, and made it what it was. Star Trek is a real ex example of a place. You know, there are certain shows where, where fans do have an impact on, on a show, and that's a real sort of place. What, what impact, you know, obviously got the show on the air, but what, what kind of impact did the fans have on your show over the years? Well, we became the most successful Star Trek show of all. And uh, that was the fans tuning in every, every week for seven years. Um, I think it had a lot to do with the fact that um, they sensed that as a cast, we got on famously. We really, uh, we're, I mean, we're all still best friends. We, and I don't think many, there are many other shows that it were canceled 11 years ago that can say that, that they're still best friends. Um, and I think they sensed that camaraderie and the love that we had. And I was always amazed at how I would go to my dermatologist or my dentist or, you know, my GP, and they were all Star Trek fans. Um, and they would, I mean, if, if it hadn't been our turn to make movies, um, I think our show probably could have sustained an audience for a few more years. But it was our turn and, and there were other Star Trek shows waiting in the wings. So, uh, you know, we went on. But the fans have remained loyal. They still schlep out to see us at conventions. Um, they still buy, the, you know, the product. Uh, they scour the TV guide and, on, and the internet to find out what other projects we do. So they support you throughout your career. I went to see Patrick in a play in London this year and half the audience were Star Trek fans. You know, they, they'll come and see you wherever you are. Amazing. Mm -hmm. When did you start to become exposed to, you know, you, the, 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 the reporters were sort of your initial clue. 
when did you have the full-on Star Trek icon experience? Oh, gosh. Um, my, there was one, it, it, was, it was a while after we, I think it was actually after the, um, the series ended, and it was, I was in London for the premiere of uh, Generations, our first movie, and a convention organizer decided that as the whole cast was going to be in London for this premiere, that he would have a convention at the Royal Albert Hall with all of us appearing over two days. And I had been to the Royal Albert Hall the last time I was in, Eng well, just before I left England to come to America, I'd gone to see Sting. And, you know, London, you have to park three miles away and then walk to the Royal Albert Hall, which holds about 6,000 people. And I, had wa I was walking with my best friend, Jan, and we were talking. And we were both, you know, unemployed actresses at the time. And uh, I said, can you imagine all these people are going to see him? All these thousands of people walking in one direction to one place, they're all going to see Sting. I said, what must that be like? It was mind-boggling to me. You know, cut two, eight years later, and all those people were walking to see us. And I'm sure if there were a few people, one or two in the audience, who maybe specifically you know, were fans of mine who were coming to see me. And I got on stage, and I think I cried for an hour. Especially, you know, the hometown girl, you know, made good and all that stuff. And it was probably the iconic moment of my life, having 6,000 of my fellow countrymen screaming, you know, my name. Amazing. In this, you know, in this legendary concert hall. How much of it do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember much apart from my, at one point had the audience singing soccer anthems. <laughs> because I'm a big soccer <laughs> fan. I thought that was hysterical. Next time, Marina Sirtis enters the world of the future. The challenges of working with aliens, green screens, and special effects. Growing with the show. The teasing of Patrick Stewart. How the cast got along. And working on the sets at Paramount. For now, are you a Star Trek fan? Why? What was your favorite Star Trek franchise? The original, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, Discovery, the J.J. Abrams reboot? Let us know in the comments. And if you want more Star Trek comment, please subscribe on Patreon so I can do more of these interviews and maybe even include your questions. Till then, I'm David Levin. We will see you then, and thanks for watching. Don't miss Ask Them Yourself, a live version of Pop Goes the Culture where you can be part of the conversation via Skype or FaceTime. <laughs>